watching Sports Vinyl. Hey, all top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Vinyl on a frosty night of really intriguing basketball, at least in southeast Iowa and western Illinois. The fun stuff in northeast Missouri is on lockdown till tomorrow night, which is tournament title night. Sure is, and the top end of tonight's schedule is still stellar, a battle of stellar point guards in Macomb, a showdown of incredible bigs in Carthage, and now about Keokuk, how about Keokuk trying to contend with a Mount Pleasant lineup that starts five, yes, five D1 athletes. Chris. A lot of them football guys, other sports, but there's some basketball guys in that as well. But first business is first business. Let's check in with the Quincy Blue Devils, whose roller coaster ride through this early season or this midseason continues. After two incredible wins last week, the Blue Devils go on the road, struggle early against Rock Island, rally all the way back in this game, and yet fall to the Rocks again on the road. The Blue Devils now are two and three in conference play on the season. Now let us take you to Southeast Iowa. Jeff Dahl's team with a load tonight against the number three Mount Pleasant squad. And you know what? Keokuk looked good early on the wing. It's Johnny Dahl for three of his 22 points on the night. That was a game high. Ring him up. And our friend Linda, she's loving it. She's a big Johnny Dahl fan. Meanwhile, at the other end, Blake Vandenberg, he is a heck of a football player for Mount Pleasant. The Panthers like him in the low blocks as well. Nice rebound for him. Nice put back. Later, more to come from the big fellas down low. This, my friends, Nick Lyon on the run out. Nicely done. Good finish. Keokuk, though, giving no quarter in this game. Dan Williams from the outside knocks down a triple. Then from the wing, this time wing right, Dimitri Galbraith wide open for three, and the Chiefs had a one-point lead at this juncture, 18-17. Dan Williams trying to augment that just a bit later, and this one with a beautiful pull-up jumper right here from just inside the arc. However, Mount Pleasant would throw the accelerator down in the latter part of the first half. This is Nick Lyon again, hitting the boards hard, and then from the outside, Jordan Ashton going to show off that feathery jump shot of his. There's a reason, my friends, Mount Pleasant is the number three team in the state, and here's why they beat Keokuk on the road by 10 tonight. Final count in this one sees the Chiefs lose 67 to 57 was your final. Elsewhere in Southeast Iowa, the number one small school team in the state hosts Holy Trinity tonight. And we see why Danville is so good as well. Danville wins that game by the final count of 63 to 30. Josh, you're up. We'll go ahead and take it to Macomb. Great atmosphere between the Bombers and Rock Ridge. And check out Matt Ad, excuse me, Nick Hiley there, the big swat in the paint. And then Matt Adkinson cashes it in in transition. Nice heads up play there from the Bombers. Then how about another block from Hiley? He did finish with 14 points on the offensive side of things. McLean Johnson's going to fire inside for the lay-in from Reed Fulkerson. McComb hanging tight with uh, Rock Ridge's whole game. They're a very good shooting team, though. Then it's Johnson in transition. He shows off that quick step to get to the hoop. Then it's going to be Matt Atkinson finding some space down low. This game, as I mentioned, back and forth all night. Johnson's going to bounce it inside. Nick Sievers for the tough finish. Yeah, reverse very nicely, but Rock Ridge wins it by four over McComb, 48 to 44 on the road tonight. Great point guards there, Ross. We've got great centers of attention tonight at Carthage. That, my friends, is Tanner Williams getting some recruiting looks from Quincy University, among others. Both center stellar Evan McGaffey, who you see right here, and Tanner Williams. Nothing no beats a Twitsy Pop, as you saw from that young man's expression. Back the other direction. Best big of the night for, uh, for these guys, for Orion, was that fella. That, my friends, was Trent DeDecker, but Evan McGaffey just kept answering in the first half, and then in the first quarter, in fact, he scored his team's first six points, doing great work of the low blocks. Here is the aforementioned Tanner Williams. His first take of the night, not too impressive. This was more impressive. However, this was indicative of the night Mr. Williams would have. Gets the finish, called for the charge. He foul out tonight. He also had only 14 points as Line West limits him defensively. And you know what? The beach crew, gonna love the water wings, <laughs> all intact tonight. Carthage kids, or the Illini West kids, I should say, doing it up right tonight. Beautiful stuff right here on the low blocks again from Evan McGaffey, who had himself a monster night. Tanner Williams, no Tanner Williams, didn't matter. This was a kid possessed with 25 points tonight. The bigs for Illini West doing work in this one. That's uh, our man Spencer Kirkenschlager knocking down the jumper as well. You know what? Illini West had a big, big finish down the stretch. Also got a huge dunk in the fourth quarter from Evan McGaffey to seal the deal on this one as the Chargers avenge an earlier loss this season as they knock off Orient at home. 53-50 to was your final there. We've got more for you tonight. Unity tonight and Central playing at it. An Adams County battle for bragging rights in this one. And this is Andrew Jitter Jansen 
The long pass up to Reed Bensinger, who had himself a heck of a night tonight. More Mr. Bensinger for a second. Great ball movement by the Mustangs here. It's Bensinger from the outside. He was just lights out tonight. Career night for that young man who was hitting from everywhere tonight. Finished his night with 22 points. Central trying to answer Doug Weiss with a kick out. Adam DeWoof from the outside, knocking down a three to try to answer. More D to come right here. Central with Austin Dormeyer as he knocks the pass away and takes it floor length to get the two at the other end. Just too much jitter tonight. Too much Andrew Jansen. He's going to push the ball up to Reed Bensinger. But 22 points in the night. Good stuff for him. Good night for the Unity Mustangs as they went on the road. A tough place to play Camp Point Central. Beating Douglas Weiss, who had 18, and the Panthers 48 to 45 was your final. Other scores to pass along. Brown County by one tonight over North Green, riding the Volkswagen. Justin Volk with 27 points in that ball game. Also, Western Calhoun postponed tonight due to weather. Grigsville Perry somehow got their game in with Liberty and won by 10. That's an impressive win. The big fella Clayton Meyer has been playing as well as any big in our area of late. 20 and 12 for that young man. Also, Pleasant Hill Carrollton canceled tonight due to weather. West Central for the second time in, what, six days now, Ross. Beats Triopia 46 to 40 and New Berlin. Boy, they gave Payson Seymour a scare, but just couldn't get the job done as Payson Seymour gets the win in that one, 58 to 55. We'll go ahead and take it to a few more scores here. Rushville Industry, the win tonight, 61-27 as Austin Jones chips in 17 points. And along, we'll go ahead and take you now to La Plata and Scotland. Check out the accuracy. Bryce Cowell to Cordy Kiger, long court. But La Plata not done, though. They'll get it inside themselves. Baseline, they get it going inside the paint. But then Harley Stone on the other end of things, he drives in, gets that easy lane and the layup. And a three-pointer from La Plata. This game went back and forth for a while, but the final score in this one between La Plata and Scotland was La Plata 70, Scotland County 62. We played an awfully good team. Also, in non-tournament action in Missouri, I told you, pretty thin schedule tonight. Ellsbury does what Ellsbury does, goes on the road and wins by 33 at Montgomery County. Scott Kreger, the All-State point guard with 13 points there. And Clopton, who's been pretty good this season, a rare loss tonight to a pretty good community. Our 16, 36, 33 was your final there. We're going to go back into Missouri now. Oh, it was Knox County and the North Shelby girls fighting it out for third place tonight. Hannah Strange with the hoop and the harm. Off of a board right there. North Shelby, though, looking for more. Liz Lindberger going to come up in the paint and clean up very nicely for her team there. And it's Brianna Kokenauer on a very nice drive as well for the Lady Raiders. Tell you what, Knox County kind of threw the accelerator down in the second half. Devin Goodhouse going to do some things right here. First with the defense, big block for her. Then working from the wing, it's a good house. She's mighty, mighty, letting it all hang out right there with the two right there. Hannah Strange adding to the contributions as well right here with the two with the pull up right there. Knox County looking really good as they end up uh, winning this game tonight. Final count in this one was 51-32. Knox County getting the job done. Championship night tomorrow night over at Shelbyville and at Palmyra as well where you were tonight, Ross. Yes, sir. We'll go to the consolation championship between Van Farr and Clark County. Coaches Blake Hogan and Kelly Campbell there playing on the uh, consolation side. As I mentioned, Hannah Trump's going to pull down this offensive rebound. Rim, glass, and in. Nice touch there, but then First quarter, Casey Gatson's going to create it with the defense. She gets the steal and the layup at the other side. But going back now, Clark County, Hannah Trump this time throwing out the assist. Slings it across court as Brittany Miller wastes no time. Doesn't hesitate on that jumper. Then here's the last play of the first quarter. Gatson's going to cut down the center, find Janice Johnson with a quick layup. Nice job to get it in before the clock. But Clark County wins the consolation championship tonight, 60 to 32 over Van Farr. Nice comeback win tonight for the Keokuk Chiefs on the road at Mount Pleasant. The girls get the deed done, winning 47 to 40. Uh, this game was a game which Keokuk trailed for most of the fourth quarter, but came on strong about midway through. Zoe Kavon with 13 points and a couple of boards. I think she had 10 to help lead the way in that one. Also, we have some college basketball scores to pass along tonight. Tough night for the Illinois College Blue Boys. The men will lose on a three-pointer at the buzzer. Final count in this one was 76 to 73. The women tonight just cannot mount any kind of offense whatsoever against Carroll. And the Lady Blues end up winning that game by the final count of 56 to 34. Coming up tomorrow, another loaded day on the overtime docket for you. Basketball everywhere, including a couple of big ones in town. Hinsdale's in town to play the Quincy Blue Devils, who are reeling from the loss tonight. Big one tomorrow as well as Peoria Manual, the number one team in the state in Class 3, visits Quincy Notre Dame. That is an earlier 7 o'clock start. We'll be there with those highlights on overtime, plus all your tournament title action going on tomorrow. I think we're going to make a trip up to Abingdon as well 
to see uh, the Liberty Eagles in action tomorrow? We may beat that 21 highlights. Who knows? We're going to do our best tomorrow, <laughs> Ross, and hopefully keep our sanity intact yeah. along the way. <laughs> also want to remind everybody, we're talking high school basketball in low about, uh, about three minutes here on uh, ConnectTriStates.com. It is our uh, Sports Final live chat. If you read Dewarisms this week, we ranked our top 10 player of the year candidates, at least to date. Here's your chance to disagree with us, argue with us, agree with us, or maybe champion someone we didn't mention. So again, ConnectTriStates.com. Actually, that will start at 1040. Ross and I will both be there. And again, we'll see you tomorrow night at 1030 for what looks like a great day of overtime. We didn't yeah. even mention Quincy University back at home tomorrow as well. All of that coming your way at 1030 for the Tri-State's longest and most complete weekend sports wrap-up. Ross and I will see you then.